what happened in Surabaya was quite special. It was uh, a Buddhist festival organized by um, uh, a meta school, this Chinese Buddhist uh, organization under Venerable Haitao. You know, there, there is an, this, is a, this is an association that is associated with his name. Can you tell me your experience, the atmosphere of the, the festival? Yes, yeah, sure. This is Buddhist Foto's first time going to, first of all, an Islamic country. The entire festival was set up like a sort of um, journey. And there, they, you, you, there was only one way which you could get into the exhibit. And you had to walk through all these different displays, you know, featuring, you know, the Four Noble Truths, various Buddhist doctrines. Uh, you know, there was even a, um, like a cartoon uh, freeze of um, the Buddha's li various lives and, and final life and all these sorts of, um, you know, very quirky things. And then you would open, you, you walk out into an open space where uh, there were several corridors worth of Buddhist stalls. Um, some were bigger than the others. Buddhist Store International happened to have one stall. And our theme was uh, Buddhism in Hong Kong. Because out of the 16 stalls that were there, only four were actually from overseas. And so that was quite uh, an experience. We were among many native uh, organizations. The atmosphere overall was very good because we had all sorts of different people coming to these uh, native Indonesian organizations. And, and people were curious to see what Buddhist door was like because, you know, we, we, we weren't from the country, you know, and we were here just to show off <laughs> what uh, Hong Kong Buddhists have to offer. All our material, all our publications and, and CDs and promotional material, we offer it for free. So we weren't selling anything, but technically we sold out very quickly within, I think, um, the fourth or fifth day we had already given away most of our cds most of our talks uh, you know our record records our, our, our magazines our books so um there were only a few things that were still remaining items that were still remaining after 10 days and i think by the we, we were there for a total of 12 days and by the 11th day we had essentially nothing in terms of organization uh we got set up pretty uh, quickly it was just one day's worth of effort and then uh, after that it was just um, you know mixing interacting meeting and making friends so it was actually quite a inspiring and relaxing time for us can you talk something um, about the festival the history Buddhist history well it's interesting because uh, from what I know and from what our new friends in Indonesia have told us Buddhism is actually uh, very old. It's a very old religion in um, in the country, and uh, there has been a long history of Chinese migrants uh, coming to uh, uh, Indonesia ever since the uh, medieval period. Uh, you could look at um, you know Borobudur. Borobudur is the probably the most famous landmark uh, of Buddhism in Indonesia, and easily the biggest Buddhist temple in the world. And they have a long history of absorbing the teachings and the traditions from South Asia. The greater region of South East, Southeast Asia, sorry, has been uh, sort of like a sponge, sort of absorbing all the transmissions coming f out of India and out of Sri Lanka. But because of Indonesia's, uh, you know, position as an archipelago, as, a, as, a, as a, a maritime sort of destination. They've also been absorbing north, northern influence from China. And so they've got a very interesting blend of Theravada, Mahayana, and Vajrayana teachings. And, they, and, and of course, in the, past, in the past, this was interrupted with Islamic conquest, you know, the arrival of the Dutch. And, but, you know, all three relig major religions of uh, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism still survive, obviously, in Indonesia. And so when the Republic of Indonesia was established by Sokano, he declared that all religions in the country would enjoy equal, uh, equal support uh, and enjoy minimal interference from the state, even though it was going to be an Islamic Republic. And so I think... Uh, Without, with, without this sort of infrastructure, Buddhism would not have uh, persisted. Uh, as you know, um, 
Buddhism died out in the uh, around the 11th, 13th century in India, whereas this was not the case for medieval Indonesia. So I think um, the, the preservation of Buddhism throughout this time has been largely due to a combination of luck and good, and, and, and good governance. The festival itself was held in a hall, in a convention hall, in a shopping mall. Shopping mall. So um, anyone could go. It wasn't just for Buddhists, even though there were, you know, there were Dharma talks, there were performances. I think, of course, those would have been more tailored towards Buddhists. But when it came to the actual exhibition and you know walking through, I think it was just an invitation, really, for uh, anyone. And the, obviously, the vast majority of people in that shopping center would have been Islamic, would have you know been Muslim. The festival, in a nutshell, is special because. It speaks to a unique identity amongst Indonesians. Very few Indonesians consider themselves Buddhists overall. Yet it also speaks to all Indonesians. It, is not, it, it was not an exclusive festival of any kind. Yeah, if anything, it was more uh, of a reminder of how entwined Buddhism is with Indonesian history and heritage. And I think that's most important because even if I wasn't Buddhist, let's just say, if I wasn't Buddhist, I should still be able to appreciate what the cultural heritage Buddhism has given, you know, my, my own history. Indonesian Buddhists are very mindful of which teaching uh, that you subscribe to. One of the questions that I got a lot was, uh, what school do you follow? What tradition do you follow? What vehicle do you follow? I think it might be in part related to this search for identity, to this issue of identity, we're talking about, you know, Buddhist identity in Indonesia, in Indonesia you know, relations with um, the Islamic majority, and this exploration of what it means to be a Buddhist, you know, because a Buddhist is a very broad term. There are many, there, Buddhism is made of many different kinds of um, uh, groups, traditions, schools. This was one of um, the most interesting experience we've ever had uh, for Buddhist Door International. And I th I'm hoping we'll be able to do many of these uh, exhibits across the world in the future because it really uh, builds bridges. It helps us connect with other Buddhist friends, brothers and sisters. It also helps us to um, bring our own voice into the wider community. And, um, of course, our strength is online, but uh, nothing can really replace that human touch, that human encounter. I think the personal meeting with a different, you know, a, a different group of people who are still Buddhist is always the most satisfying and encouraging thing.